Okay, this is a project I did a little while ago, but I've been pretty lazy editing the video. In this video, I will be putting down a uncoupling membrane, and the product I'm using is called Ditra by a company called Schluter. You can see that I've already ripped up most of the floor in the bathroom. I've got another video on putting this chunk of plywood down and reinforcing the subfloor. Before you put down the Ditra, you need to check their manual and see what your joist sizes are as well as see what your subfloor thickness is to make sure that your subfloor and joists can handle the Ditra subfloor, which is an uncoupling membrane. And for this, really you just need a utility knife and a tape measure, it's not too hard. To cut it to the general size of the room, you can either just roll it out and cut it once you get to the wall, or you can measure it, either way is fine. This stuff cuts fairly easily. I did find that you need to go over the cut line once or twice after you made your initial cut. To cut around for some of the plumbing fixtures, I just cut a, a straight line from the wall and then I cut a hole in the Ditra using the utility knife where the plumbing would come through the floor and you can see that is the water line for the toilet. So in this instance I do want the Ditra behind the water lines so I'm going to cut a straight line through there I'm not going to cut a big gap and once the Ditra is set in place I'll still be able to tile behind the the water line for the toilet. Now for the other water lines and these are for the sink and the drain for the sink. I'm a little bit less concerned because there's actually going to be a vanity on top of this and I'm not going to be putting tile down uh, really anyway so you're not going to see this cutout. So I'm doing a little bit more of a utilitarian cutout for these ones. Now for the toilet flange or the stack I'm just going to put the Ditra in place where it's going to be and then cut around the toilet flange with the utility knife. Pretty simple, no measuring really required, and I'll just keep it nice and tight to the uh, actual PVC pipe. I found cutting through the plastic was actually quite easy. It's the mesh on the back that's a little bit more difficult to cut through. And you can see I've put down the second sheet where it's going to go and I, I cut it the same, just rolled it out and then cut it when I got to the wall. But there is a heat register on this side of the room so I'm going to cut it the same way that I cut for the toilet flange and that is just leave it in place, kind of push it down with your hand to find the perimeter of the air duct and then use the utility knife to just cut out the outline. Overall, I found it very simple to cut around objects like this. Now, I am going to rip some tiles back a little bit further. I'm just going to show you sort of the oddity that is the tile floor here. You can see that it's not a normal mortar that was used on this tile floor uh, that the previous owner put down. And I'll just try and pop a tile out using the uh, little child's hammer that I got and this crowbar, but it, what it looks like actually is that they used construction adhesive to put down the tiles, which probably explains why a lot of them are cracking. So when I rip up this underlay and pop up some of these tiles, you can see that it's, it's, not, it's not like a mortar. It's more like a, a rubbery, like I said, it looks a lot like construction adhesive. So I'm not sure if it is or if they use some sort of flooring adhesive for this. If you know what that is, put it in the comments, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I put the little baby hammer away and got a, a, a bigger crowbar and a sledgehammer. And I'm going to rip this further back so that the bathroom and the mudroom and then also the laundry room all have the same tile. I am doing the tiling in stages, so I am going to have to get a little bit creative with how I lay the tiles. because so I'm going to do the laundry room after. And I'm likely going to extend the hardwood floor up to where this uh, Schluter Ditra stops there. So you can see I cut out the extra two pieces of this Schluter Ditra product. And, you know, there's nothing, nothing too challenging there. Made a couple little cuts to get around the door and under the door frame so that the tiles would go under the door frame nicely. Now before I lift up the Ditra, I did mark out 
where it sort of sits on the floor so that when I put down the mortar base, I'm actually dropping it right where I want it and I'm not having to mess around with it too much. Now before putting down the mortar and actually sticking the detritus to the floor, I want to make sure that all the dust, all the dirt, anything like little nails or staples are all up off the floor so that they don't interfere with the uncoupling membrane. I got a pack of sponges and I'm going to just sponge the floor down as well and that'll help get any of the remaining dust up off the floor. Now for this I am using the actual Schluter flooring compound and I don't have a fancy measuring container so I'm just using an old Nalgene bottle and some buckets. One thing to note, I am using a dust mask. Obviously this is sort of a, a more advanced dust mask than you require for the job, but you do not want to breathe in any sort of concrete dust. It's not particularly good for you. Now to mix this stuff, I'm just using a drill, obviously. And what I did was cut a hole through the top of the lid so that I don't spray the mortar all over the place or get the dust all over the place and I found that's helpful and then sort of once it's fairly thoroughly mixed it doesn't really splash around quite as much uh, and then you could take the lid off after that. Now the recommendation is to mix it for five minutes, let it sit for ten minutes and then come back and mix it for an additional three minutes. I did buy the specific Ditra trowel with the 4.5 millimeter teeth and I have a float as well. As well I got the the curdy corners so because it's a bathroom I'm going to do all the corners. I'm not going to do the corners in the mudroom though I'm not really concerned about water getting into the edges. And then I also got the Schluter curdy trowel. So I'll just speed it up a little bit. Not a whole lot of mystery in putting this down. So you can see I am spreading it evenly across the floor, mixing it up, making sure that it's actually sticking to the subfloor, and then I will come back and comb it out and, and comb the ridges into the floor. Uh, the other thing I found was having the marks on the wall was also beneficial so that I didn't put more down at a time than required. So really I'm just doing one sheet at a time. And that's the extent of the modified thin set mortar I put down, this curdy all set. So you see I'm combing it in. And that's what it sort of looks like before I drop the Schluter Ditra on top of it. Now, quite honestly, a bit of a pain to get this first sheet in there, but after that was done, it was pretty simple. No real trick to it. Obvi I think it's a little bit more difficult than they, they maybe show in the Schluter Ditra video. Because I'm putting it down with the pretty janky drywalls. So there's little pieces of drywall keep dropping off the wall and stuff. Kind of annoying, but it's not too bad. It's only slightly more challenging than sort of how they imply in their video where they do it in a warehouse on a wide open floor. The other thing I found, when you stand on it or kneel on it, it does sort of indent into the mortar a little bit. Obviously the mortar is not too thick, but if I rub my hand over it, I can sort of feel where my foot was or where my knee was just ever so slightly. So I did switch over to a piece of plywood so that I didn't get that indentation. To get the indentation, I really just worked it over with the float and then after a few passes, it kind of settled it out so that everything was at the same level. But definitely if you're, if you're kneeling on it and just walk away, then you may have an indentation in your Schluter Ditra, which probably isn't a big deal, but it might be an issue when you go to tile it. So like I said, I used a piece of plywood and then I found that it didn't really leave much of an indentation into the Ditra. With the second piece, again, a little bit of a pain because it couldn't reach that one corner from the door. After that, it was uh, a little bit easier. And you see I'm sort of holding the door and then working the float over where I had that piece of plywood. And for the last two pieces, pretty much more of the same. Once again, putting on the modified thin set mortar working it in a little bit so that it sticks to the floor. Again, if there's any dust on it, you want to work it a little bit so it doesn't actually lift off because of the dust. And then once you've worked the thin set mortar across the floor a little bit, turn it over and get the ridges in there. And then once that's done, obviously put the Schluter Ditra 
uncoupling membrane right on top of it. Once you set the Schluter on top of the thin set, I did find that it was a little bit hard to slide, like you couldn't really slide the whole sheet. So definitely try and get it as close to perfectly placed the first time and not sort of slide it into position. And then once again, take the float and work it across the floor make sure that the Dietra is stuck down to the floor. And I don't bother filming the uh, final piece that goes down the exact same way. So I let everything sit overnight and now I'm going to do all these curry corner pieces as well as do the edges. So once again, this is a, a thin set mortar. You can see I've got really janky drywall, but it turns out okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. So this is very similar to putting down the membrane, only obviously you're putting it on top of the membrane and up against the drywall. In this instance, I'll lay down the mortar on both the floor as well as the wall. And then take the curdy trowel which has smaller notches than the Dietra trowel and get the ridges into the mortar. Then I'll take the curdy corner and really just place it in the corner. Not too much of a, a secret there. And I'll just use the small drywall trowel I got to ensure that it's pressed down firmly against the floor and get all the uh, wrinkles and bumps out of it so that it's sitting down nice and flat. And then the same thing goes for the wall piece. I'll just run the drywall knife across it and make sure that it's firmly embedded in the mortar that I put down. Now because there's no bath or shower, these corner pieces may actually be a little bit overkill, but since this is the first time I'm using this product, I wanted to try everything out in this bathroom before I progress to bathrooms that have showers and uh, bathtubs and stuff like that. Now I got the other corner in there as well. Obviously I didn't bother filming it after filming the first one. And now I'm going to use the curdy strip to do the rest of the wall. So just like the corner, I put the mortar right on top of the Dietra and then I put the mortar on the wall. And I'm going to take the curdy trowel, drag that across and make sure that I got my ridges in the mortar. Now for this piece, you do need to fold it in half, pretty simple, and make sure that you've cut it so that you have overlap on the two corner pieces. And once it's down, once again, take your trowel or a drywall knife or whatever you got and make sure that it's firmly stuck down into the mortar bed that you placed. I found that initially I did go pretty high on the wall with the mortar and I do regret putting it up that high. I do come around and try and get all the mortar off the drywall. It probably won't be an issue once I put down the trim again, but obviously you want it as flat as possible. So this is what the bathroom looks like when all the corner and edge pieces are down as well as the seam pieces. I found the product overall was pretty easy to work with and now I need to go pick out some tiles and get ready to put those down. So we'll see how well it works with the application of the tiles. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.